Hey guys, it's me, Jamel, back with another video. This time I'm giving you a quick review of My Hero Academia Season 4, Episode 14, Bright Future. So this season of My Hero Academia, it's been building up, and the main focus has been the rescue of this little girl, Eerie, from the Yakuza. Uh, the Yakuza in My Hero Academia, they've been, they've been pretty much at a down pace ever since quirks were discovered all those years ago in the world. So the young head of the Yakuza overhaul, he's now heading it up and he's now manipulating and using the daughter, the granddaughter of the former head of the Yakuza who's in a coma because of him. And he's using her blood to create this serum that will be able to strip away another person's quirk. We saw it earlier in the season with Amajiki. Uh, it was a sample. It took it away for about 24 hours, but this time it's permanent. And we saw in a couple episodes ago, unfortunately, it was used against Mirio, um, the great hero, Lemillion. It took his powers away, but because of his training, because of his determination, he was still able to not only beat the like just beat uh, overhaul and get eerie away from him he was able to give her hope again in humanity and in other people so it was a great moment for him even though we ended up losing him as a hero for now um then um we also saw throughout this time uh deku step up um the rest of the heroes they rescued they caught up to lemillion they caught up to airy and um <coughs> excuse me Unfortunately, during this battle, Night Eye, Sir Night Eye, ended up getting uh, severely injured. And so we get to the final fight of the season, the big climax, which is Deku versus Overhaul. And because of Eerie's power, which is called re Rewind, it allows her to rewind a person back to a previous state. It allows her to get a person back so that an injury could heal, or if they go far back far enough it erases them from existence so it's a powerful quirk once she's going to be able to use it and control it but it's dangerous as well because she's not trained and she does she has no idea how to activate her quirk or even shut it off so it's very dangerous and so in the previous episode uh, infinite 100 we finally get to see deku sort of use 100 percent of uh one for all and he doesn't get hurt previously we saw him get hurt he got injured so so badly that his joints and his arm they're messed up and he had to switch to using more of a kick based offense but <coughs> excuse me but deku he you know he was able to go all out and ended up winning and beating overhaul finally rescuing Eri and essentially putting it into the yakuza and so in this episode we kind of see the aftermath um First, we see Overhaul being taken away. He's being arrested. He's probably going to go to Tartarus, same place that Stain's locked up, same place that All for One is locked up. But the League of Villains, led by Shigaraki, along with Dobby, Compress, and um, Spinner, they attack the caravan, taking him to the prison. Um, and because Overhaul's tied up, he can't do anything. He can't defend himself. Plus, he's injured, so he can't heal himself, which we found out that he could do previously. <coughs> And so while he's tied to the gurney, all he can do is just watch as um, the, the League of Villains, as Shigaraki, not only takes the serum, but uses his power, Decay, to decay both of his arms. And essentially, it leaves him powerless because, in more ways than one, because the Yakuza is not only dead, but he's quirkless because his arms are his quirk. He can't use his quirk without um, manipulating and using his arms. And so... Um, essentially, he's taken completely out of the game, and this is really a good reintroduction of Shigaraki because he hasn't really done anything too over the top. Like, he wasn't really the one who was, you know, the final fight with All Might and All for One. He was kind of in the background, and so he's kind of been in the background, kind of manipulating things, you know, working and kind of playing overhaul in the rest of the Yakuza. And now he not only has this serum, which can, which can take away other people's quirks, he essentially wiped out his only real competition as far as villains go. So very interesting, very great villain moment for uh, Shigaraki and the rest of the League of Villains. Back to the heroes, we see everyone. Um, they're in the hospital recovering. Kirishima, Fat Gum, uh, Amajiki, as well as uh, Togeta. Um, you know, we... 
we're probably going to find out in the next couple episodes when everyone realizes that, oh, Togeda no longer has his powers. Hopefully he doesn't get kicked out of UA. I think that'd be a real bad move for him to, you know, just get completely kicked out because he doesn't have a quirk because he proved that he can be a hero without the power. And so uh, Mr. Aizawa, he's recovering, but he wasn't as injured as everyone else. And so we now get to the person who is the most injured, the person who's the most hurt, which was Night Eye, because he had a stone pillar impaled through his torso. And essentially, this, this is uh, the goodbye moment because All Might's there. Recovery Girl came trying to help as much as she could. The doctors did the surgery, tried to do as much as they could. And unfortunately, uh, Night Eye, he ends up dying. Um, but he dies with hope because um, we saw what caused the falling out of Night Eye and All Might is that Night Eye touched All Might. And because of his power, he was able to see into All Might's future and saw All Might dying. And so that kind of caused the split between the two. And then um, as we go through, went through the season um, and during the fight that he was having with Overhaul, Night Eye sort of revealed to us, the audience, that he saw the future where him and Deku, they died during the fight and Overhaul ends up escaping. And so it's it was sad in a way because Night Eye has grown over the season. He's grown, and I've really come to like Night Eye as a character because he is, you know, he's so efficient. He's, you know, he's not, he's different from some of the other pro heroes that we've gotten to know, but he still has that hope because, you know, he's All Might's old sidekick. And he became sort of that mentor to Deku um, and was a really big mentor and a really big influence on Togeta and Togeda, Deku, and All Might, they were devastated, but Night Eye, he died with a smile on his face and encouraged them to live with that humor, live with the, the smiles that they had, because, you know, this is, that's what the, their main gifts are. That's what he saw in Togeda. He saw him as the successor because he knew that he could give people hope. He knows All Might can give people hope, and now, because of what he's seen with Deku, because of what he's done with Eerie, he now sees that Deku can give people hope as well. And so it was really emotional, and I really enjoyed this episode. I think it was a great sort of penultimate episode before we close out this part of season four, before we move into the next thing for the back half of the season, because that's how My Hero always does. There's something, you know, really big in one half, uh, like in season two, sports festivals, stain, and then leading into the summer camp. Uh, season three, it was the summer camp. Uh, Bakugo getting kidnapped and then the fight with All for One versus All Might. And then eventually the uh, provisional hero license exam. And now we've gotten the rescue of Iri with the kids with uh, Kirishima Deku. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Still have a little bit of a code. Kirishima Deku, Sue, and Uraraka going through their work studies. And so now now we're going to get to the other students. We're going to get back to the campus and see how the other students react to seeing, uh, you know, what happened with Kirishima, uh, Deku, Uraraka, and Sue. So, yeah, this episode, really good, really well done, really well paced. I enjoyed it a lot. I think that this is one of the stronger episodes that we've had, even though the fight with All Might with uh, Deku and Overhaul wasn't as long as, you know, the fight between All Might and All for One or uh, All Might versus the uh, the Nobu in season one. It was still a really good and well done fight and served a great purpose. Um, so I can't wait to see what happens this coming weekend uh, when the next episode drops. Thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to check out my review of Bad Boys 3 and uh, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.